Thanks again for watching Switch Up, guys. Remember, each month we give away a free game to those active on the channel. This is our review of Jess Amero, Hero of the Universe. Thank you to the developer for the review copy. So how does taking on the role of a totally clueless, gigantic, shiny red robot who looks like Bender from Futurama's long-lost cousin grab you? Bender! And that is why they call me Bender the Magnificent! What if I told you he can fly? Still not sure? Okay, okay, he thinks he's the saver of the earth, but he's about as useful as a gigantic chocolate teapot. Is this one you're going to want to embark upon, or do you reckon we should just send this one back down the black hole? Let's find out. All you know to begin with is you're a slightly self-conscious giant tin can. You awake on a desolate planet and wouldn't you know it, end up bumbling your way into a fight to the death with a strange Godzilla-like giant insect looking fella. Well, after a suitably epic fight, you unlock a piece of story in the form of a comic book flashback. And it's through this method you gradually and... And I can't emphasize just how gradually unravel the story. The comic book sections look nice enough and the story is okay if a little predictable. You're on a quest to save humanity. What exactly from, you're not entirely sure. Now, although very likeable, I don't think enough was done in terms of story. You meet a flying drone who offers you the occasional motivational speech, but other than that, you're on your own. Much of the dialogue given is by Jetta Mero himself, which is amusing, however, and his ongoing quest to save humanity is quite well handled, it's just a little bit slow paced. Story scores 13 out of 20. I initially loved the concept. Dumped on a randomly generated planet and given free reign to walk where I wanted, stomp what I wanted and collect lovely little yellow gems. Yes please. It felt like that old N64 game, Blast Core in this regard, only with no real structure. Pressing forward on the stick adds a movement to what is quite possibly the derpiest robot in the galaxy. Seriously, this guy is a bumbling buffoon and I did really enjoy his apologies as he accidentally crushes humans or puts a fire out by destroying the building. Small red beacons allow you to gather upgrades. These are purely cosmetic to make visiting different planets a little bit more compelling. But to be totally honest, this is where my alarm bells started ringing. The purely aesthetic changes were underwhelming at best. And although they did offer a reason to explore, some form of actual gameplay change, i.e. faster jetpacks, running speed or a new ability would have made the world of difference. I found myself not even looking at the new gear eventually, and that's where the game began to fall down. Once you get bored on your planet, it's time to use those yellow crystal things to blast off. Holding the trigger gives a lovely little rumble, and off you shoot. The controls feel so nice in space, and flying around was liberating, which would once again be great if there was something to actually do. Other than flying into the occasional asteroid or collecting yellow things, still I really loved how free that felt at first. With a click of the right trigger you can scan your area which shows which planets you've visited and which you haven't. It also will show you the way to the exit of each stage which is the wormhole. The essential gameplay loop of the entire game though involves finding the planet with Godzilla's alien brother on it. These look like something straight out of Sean Murray's wet dreams. No man's sky eat your heart out. <laughs> Once you find them, the visuals shift nicely and you engage them in an age-old combat style of pressing buttons that flash up on the screen until they die. I was fully ready for some epic beat em up style button mashing with counter attacks sending them flying through buildings and huge chunks of asteroid falling and crunching into your enemies, but alas. No. No, not on my watch. If you take more damage, you're sent hurtling into space, at which point you just land and try the same quick time-based fight over again. I know for a fact this game would be perfect for my kids, because there's no difficulty here at all. When the humans inevitably start attacking you, they can't hurt you, and it's actually mentioned, just uh, ignore them. Now, as a big Dark Souls fan, this hurts me both physically and mentally. An option to take damage is sorely needed for players wanting to actually, uh, play a game. As a method of just chilling and with a few beers on board in short bursts, the experience was quite nice. 
Everything looks great and it runs so smoothly, but it just gets so repetitive. Fly to a planet, kill a boss, decode the message, warp out of the system. Fly to a planet, kill a boss, decode the message, warp out of the system. Rinse and repeat. The decoding cipher sections were actually the most fun I had with the game. You rotate the sticks and decode the message, obviously. Once done, you're treated to a lovely little comic book flashback of story. This was such a great addition and the first time I saw it I was like, wow, this is going to be great. Gameplay as mentioned is literally perfect for kids, but with almost zero challenge and a repetitive streak a mile wide, the initial wow, this is great, becomes the epitome of a missed opportunity. It scores 10 out of 20. Now if only a game could be ranked simply on the audio and visuals because this is a stunner. I love the art direction and the frame rates are so gloriously smooth the control in the character feels amazing. Music is dynamic in that certain elements only play when you perform certain actions, such as when you move through space, a great little heartbeat style chilled tune thumps away in the background. Different planets are given unique visual and audio flavours and HD rumble is fantastic. With split Joy-Cons, your left and right feet make a satisfying thud of HD as you accidentally murder population after population. When entering a new system, there are genuine moments of awe, just sitting there as the sun flares in the background and pathetic humans try and take you out is great. In these moments, I was reminded of games like I Love Katamari. There is a physicality to the game that's reminiscent of these. The colour palette also goes a long way to keeping at least some of the repetition in terms of gameplay at bay. Just as with gameplay though, it isn't long before you've heard and seen everything on offer. A different shade of orange or pink and a few variations of building a side. One real plus that was nice to see was the photo mode, where you can stage the perfect shot to save as a screenshot. Now all Nintendo need to do is allow us to use that as uh, wallpaper, like all the hackers can. Visuals score 14 out of 20 and audio scores 14 out of 20 as well. Jetamero costs $13 and although I'm having a little difficulty finding the UK price, I'd guess around £10. And for that money, it is a tough one. If you fancy yourself a little relaxing jaunt through space, then maybe. If you've got kids, definitely. It really is the game for them. I so wanted to love the game and for the first 25 minutes I really did. But I wouldn't spend $13 on 25 minutes of action. At least not this type. With a sale though, and if I was buying for my children, it would be a real consideration. Don't get me wrong, for a certain player that just wants a chilled out relaxed experience that doesn't really care about the actual gameplay, this might be perfect for them. Value though scores 12 out of 20. So the final verdict, the game's charming, there's no doubt about it. There's nothing like it on the Switch and I very nearly thought this was going to be incredible. There just wasn't enough actual content in here for me and as such it scores a final switch up score of 63%. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this one guys. It's always difficult when you have to say the negatives but you know what I want to make sure that you guys know them. For all things switch all the time keep your switch up. Cheers guys. See ya.